Good morning or afternoon, pending your location. I'm uh, presenting from Southwest Missouri and wanted to welcome you and thank you for attending. It's certainly my pleasure to be with you today. Uh, my name is Mark Mayberry and I'll be covering MES in this segment of our educational fair. We thought this fair uh, to be appropriate in lieu of IWF being canceled because of COVID. So uh, fasten your seat belts as uh, we um, are covering a lot of material. Just a note before we begin, at the end, we will have a Q&A time. So there is a window um, where you can type in your questions in the webinar meeting box. So again, appreciate your time and uh, we'll just get started here. So what is MES? That's the topic of this session. According to Wikipedia, um, MES, Manufacturing Execution Systems, are computerized systems used in manufacturing to track and document transformation of raw materials to finished goods. MES works in real time to enable the control of multiple elements in the production process. So who needs MES or why do you need MES? So are missing parts an issue for you? Do you have you know, damaged parts? Is that a concern or an issue? Uh, job status, I see a lot of uh, production managers out on the shop floor spending much time trying to figure out where the status so they can report back. Um, do you have any issues with assembly? A lot of times maybe we don't, it's just that world of hurt we live in every day. Do you have shipping errors? And what is the cost? Well, you know, what is that costing you? And then maybe, do you believe you have room for process improvements? I, I certainly hope so. We always have room to improve. So why bother? Where Where is the ROI coming from on the MES? The machines are doing a great job. We have all these CNCs and saws and great equipment nowadays. They're, they're producing parts at a high rate of volume. And that's really the issue. With all the work in process, it gets chaotic finding and managing parts and assemblies. And uh, customer after customer are just reporting fabulous results with their MES. Why bother? Maybe 300% improvements, the question. I really even hesitate to share this as it sounds so unbelievable, but it's really true. Um, our customers just report, you know, 50 up to 300% in throughput improvements. Here, Kent Swenson was only building 30 cabinets per day. Assembly was his bottleneck. And now after production coach, no more people, no more machinery, no more floor space, and he can build 90 cabinets a day. So that's a pretty amazing, amazing story. So he also went out and bought more equipment then. Um, let's hear what a woodworking company has to say. Here is the words from Greg Lutz, uh, Lutz Woodworking in Wiley, Texas. Greg says, before we implemented Production Coach, our team had to sort through all the left sides, right sides, bottoms and tops that were all stacked like a shuffled deck of cards. Lutz went on to say, sorting parts for each cabinet assembly took a considerable amount of time and it was difficult to ensure no parts were missing. The picture there to the right is theirs. He said, before production coach, they uh, had the Sharpie method and they had to uh, sort parts out and then write kind of some code they knew what they were. Here's a customer testimonial, Homestead Cabinets. Um, everything they do is custom and they don't produce the same cabinet over and over. And since we installed production coach, Homestead has had record setting months of profitability. I really love this one from Franklin Building Supply. Before Production Coach was integrated, Jones said they were eight, 10, even 12 weeks out. And now they, they have a three week lead time. And even with a higher uh, production of volume, Jones went on then to say uh, not only the lead time, but he said, we were running two shifts, 16 hours a day. Now eight hours a day and with 20 less people, and they did all that while growing their business over 20%. I mean, folks, that's amazing. So 
we do make errors and one of those errors what are they costing us i think we can all agree that the sooner the error is recognized the less the financial impact and we're we're certainly interested in profits i would assume MES is located in the middle of the software hierarchy. It's often called the heart of industry 4.0. I'm sure you all already have your engineering systems in place, and we just read that data. MES can bring your CAD CAM data to life beyond your CNC. And then the ERP system, it's resource planning. It's basically more for the administrative management of inventory management, purchasing, uh, customer uh, resources, relations, um, you know, accounting, things like that. There's a lot of confusion between ERP and MES. ERP is, again, for the administrative management of the company, and MES is dedicated to shop management. Um, I like this screen. It kind of gives you a little uh, snapshot about MES and uh, especially the integration, just four to eight days. And I'll touch base on that just a little bit more. But MES gives you a 360 degree view of your shop floor. And it's really a required step in creating a smart factory and certainly a profitable factory. Industry 4.0 is the fourth in industrial uh, development to uh, introduce the, the world of digital solutions. This new era makes it possible to computerize communications and capture data between, you know, all those different machines out there on the, on the shop floor. We have the computers in the floor and we have the computers in the office, but we just kind of fail to communicate them. But that's what MES does. It brings all that together. Um, looking at this, could you imagine not going with electricity in, in Industry 2.0? And I'm certain you have computers today, which was part of industry 3.0. So my point is we embrace these industrial revolutions, but you know, when do we embrace them? I mean, it, it certainly is an advantage for those who get on board earlier rather than later. Um, it it kind of reminds me of an old saying I used to hear automate or evaporate. Next, I'm going to, pass you over to Joe Baggett. Joe is the president of Innovative Wood Process Solutions, and Joe has 22 years of professional experience. He's a consultant, and um, let me see if I can figure out how to pass Joe the screen here. Sorry there, it was a little slow, but Joe, are you there? Uh, I am. Good morning, Mark, thank you. And uh, I just wanted to start off by answering the question, at what time do we usually assimilate as things change, the addition of electricity, automation, et cetera? And there's uh, essentially two answers to that question. Uh, some is we change when we see and we get excited about the possibility of that change, and then the other part is, is that we change when we're forced to. And uh, I, I just think that there's a great opportunity. There's so many great folks in the woodworking industry that are forefront thinkers and are excited about improvements, making things better, changes that equal improvements, et cetera. And so that's where I really wanted to focus this morning about why MES matters. The, the software enables uh, actions that in and them themselves are the greatest value. And those actions are, are very important when you assess and you look at manufacturing operations, fabrication operations of wood products. One of the things that's somewhat unique to the wood industry is many times those processes start, uh, depending how vertically integrated you are in the supply chain with raw products. Uh, a sheet of material or a piece of lumber. And it, sometimes there's different states. It's maybe not a, a, a whole tree at a sawmill. Maybe it's uh, lumber that's in some type of four quarter, five quarter or 12 quarter material that's already been planed or ripped. But there is 
a point at which you have to turn around and make those into components, either to supply components or to supply yourself with components to make final assemblies. And in that of itself, working with a natural random substrate is something that some industries that are not wood related don't really have to struggle with. And then having random defects within those substrates and creating parts out of them. So when that's created, the parts that come out of those become, uh, you know, if you see the Budweiser commercials, they have the born on date from the second that you take those components out of raw sheets or lumber or other materials, they, they become something else. And at that point, how you're going to use those, the quantities in which they go together, how they fit together, what parts they go with, uh, the quality of the items, all those things become meaningful at that point. And so at that point, uh, the software to track, sort, sequence, et cetera, gives life to those parts when they're created. And so the software uh, that creates these things is essentially based on a really good analysis. And we say it's the most valuable when it's based on a really good analysis of the sort and sequence and how those parts fit together, work together, et cetera. And then keeping up with them in those uh, quantity sequences, et cetera, as you manufacture them, uh, components that you can't put together, do anything with, et cetera, really don't matter. Uh, and so I'll say, you know, volume without visibility is one of the biggest challenges. And while we wanna do a lot, make a lot, make a billion parts per hour, that visibility is really important. And so, uh, the next part I wanted to speak on is when you create these sorts and sequences, when you create a meaningful method of putting those together, the material handling method with which you use helps to not only say, hey, look, computerized uh, software tells me this is where it's at, it came out at this time, it's together, it's in this location. It's also very important to look at that and determine what material handling method makes sense to keep those parts in the sequence that you have established, in the sort, the sequence, quantity, et cetera, that you've established. So I just wanted to show some real-time pictures here. Uh, this is a, a before and after picture. This is a before picture. This is a facility making uh, 3,000 cabinets a day, um, frameless. And I'm gonna try to move to, this is the after. So. Uh, these uh, carts were the material handling method that they chose, but as soon as these parts are cut on a saw or routed from a router, electronically, they have a home and it knows which carts they're going into, how many go into each slot. These numbers right here actually represent an electronic location. So from the time that they come out of a sheet, they have a home, a place, what they go together with, how many, and it also corresponds to how much is being done in the quantity per hour and how you keep it all together. And so I just wanted to give this representation. And I wanted to, to lastly mention in the MES is why MES matters. If you have all this information readily available, uh, then you use it. Everybody gets excited about data and information until they have to do something with it or about it, right? <laughs> so. In the MES side, whenever you do this, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about a, a time before MES software was really coming into its own and we created a, uh, a, an MES uh, a function with a very, very crude methods. Um, when I worked at a major uh, casket manufacturer, we noticed when we built a new casket line that our ERP was very limited in the MES function and we saw the value. So, through uh, Allen Bradley PLCs, uh, an old Allen Bradley software called LabVIEW, and some network integration, we created an MES system which supervisory controls were added. Uh, you had a huge amount of visibility at the computer along with notifications. And so after this was implemented, it was realized that this real-time data of where everything was, if it was finished, if it was together, complete, et cetera, it was so much information that the production leadership was not aligned to take that information and use it. And so 
one of the things that is really important with MES being successful, once you have the software set up, the mature handling method, is then aligning the production leadership to use that information in a time frame that is meaningful. Um, lastly, I just would like to end with a, just a rhetorical note, but Dwight Eisenhower once said that plans were nothing, planning was anything. What MES creates is when you create a good plan, it makes it executable. And that's the difference between planning and plans. And so uh, I really encourage everyone, regardless of what wood products that you're making, uh, to consider MES as, as an essential function to your manufacturing and fabrication and to see what it can add as far as creating visibility and making the operation go from not just a level that produces parts, but produces parts in a meaningful way. So as you can see in this picture, these carts are, are ready for assembly way, way further up in the process than they were before. So uh, this is just one example, but I would implore anybody that's considering manufacturing uh, to consider this. Lastly, I'll make one uh, critical point. Uh, obviously, during these times of dealing with COVID, uh, volatile economies, et cetera, one thing that is on many people's radar in the wood business is how do you scale manufacturing and fabrication of wood components up and down. One of the greatest values that MES adds is the ability to scale. It is part of the foundation, is part of the one of the meaningful building blocks of building accelerators and decelerators for fabricating and manufacturing wood components. Uh, I look forward to the questions and uh, seeing and hearing more of people's thoughts. Uh, with that, I will uh, render the rest of my time to Mr. Mayberry. Thank you. Joe, thank you. Appreciate your experience and your wisdom. Um, so, Production Coach, that's the name of our MES system. Um, so, I want to just mention how important it is that MES, you know, was our MES was developed not for all the manufacturing companies types out there, but for your industry, the wood industry. We didn't wake up one morning and decide to create this solution. It was it was developed based on the feedback and needs of our, our customers. RSA has been in this solutions business for many, many years. And um, so, you know, naturally with the technology of barcodes, RFIDs, things like that have, have certainly assisted us in this development. The presentation today in lieu of uh, IWF, I just wanted to point out that Production Coach did win the Challengers Award at the IWF in 2018. And so since there's none uh, this year, the, the, the show's been shut down due to COVID. I just guess we can claim it for another two years. So it's amazing, four years in a row. Uh, did you know Production Coach has an average implementation time of four days? So if you'll look here, here's just a few of our customers and the time it actually took us to go on site and have them up and running. You might say, uh, you know, how did we do that? Well, we're just, again, reading that engineering data that you have. But let's take a look at our markets. Our markets were serving, you know, commercial residential cabinets, furniture, office supply, architectural furniture, et cetera. Um, this is just a little snapshot of some of our customer locations. So we're covering basically from the East Coast to the West Coast. We've got more than 3,500 users in, in uh, North America and the number is still growing. And at your requ uh, request, references, please, we ask. I mean, we have tons of them and uh, I'm proud to say, you know, we have zero failures and our customers would be happy to share their experience with you. So how does production coach work? Again, we just are leveraging or importing your data. So let's just kind of take a look at that. So again, we, 
we just import. We go to the import button and import uh, wherever your file location is, whether it's microvellum, cabinet vision, mosaic, spreadsheets, cut right, uh, WinCAD cam. Um, so anyway, the top there is our, the products, the assemblies that are in the work order. The work orders are on the left side, as you can see. Then the lower, um, they're what we call loose items. And uh, they're, they're not part of the assembly, but they're part of the job. They've got to go to the job site. So that's important, and we'll talk about that later, how we can kit and wrap those up. But uh, again, reading your data, we can create a 3D rendering of the product. And um, when you click on a, a part, it actually turns that red in the assembly. So you know where it lives. We ha have access to your drawings. We can hide parts. We can say parts are back ordered or damaged, et cetera. And really important to know that you know we have all the reading your <clears throat> excuse me we're reading your data again so we have all of your uh, drawers and slides and hardware and just all the information required for the job. I'm sure you're familiar with uh, some of these um, support tools. So the technologies available, barcodes, RFIDs, and then. Um, the sync where we can actually communicate automatically with, with some of the newer machines. So you can track parts and their status at whatever machine, wherever you want to put a, a production coach license, which requires a computer. And so you can track those activities and know what's going on. Smart labels, it's just a module again, not that I've mentioned this yet, but production coach is modular in nature. But smart labels not only displays the correct orientation for the label, so you can have assured you uh, edge band the right the right edge, but it allows you to group or batch multiple jobs together because we can organize the parts by next operation. So I'm running three jobs, and all the green go to this machine, and all the blue go to the edge bander. Again, they're different jobs, but then I eliminate all that edge bander changeover. Control center, it'd really be nice, wouldn't it, to have a, a really good visual control of what's going on out in your manufacturing facility versus kind of the chaotic manufacturing method. Production coach allows communication from the office to the installation. We're communicating those machines and, and the office and everyone in between. Um, there's alert centers and you can see status of projects and we'll touch base on that here in just a moment. Um, just, let's just take a look. I think I hit the wrong screen, sorry about that. There we go. So there's no uh, further intervention is required by your employees once the data is automatically imported. Uh oh, I'm sorry, we already did that screen. Somehow we jumped way backwards. I apologize for that. So the back here we are. The status of your projects and parts. So let's take a look at that. So you can click on a work order at any time and see the status. So every one of these stations are your stations, wherever you want to put a production coach station. And you can see how many parts I need to run on that station and how many parts I've ran on that station during the day. So it gives you a percentage of completion. You can see missing parts. You can see missing products, et cetera. So the status center, complete status of projects, and parts, a detailed status per station, visual alerts, just visualization of your production. Be in the know in real time by the alert center. So we can, um, again, I think we mentioned that earlier, but we can say we've got damaged parts. So wherever there's a production coach station, maybe you dropped it, maybe a machine malfunctioned, but uh, we can quickly get a part we can send an alert to wherever you want it, the alert to go to and get that back into manufacturing 
Um, it's uh, kind of important for me to let you know too that we can actually create the uh, information of that part via barcode. And so some people even have that sent out right to their CNC. So they can just scan that barcode, it brings up the information and uh, or the program for that machine. And of course, production coach here is gonna be telling you what the material is and what it's, what it's for, et cetera. So the alerts are really, really helpful to get those damaged parts queued up and back into the system. Create this label here that I mentioned so you can see that. So we've got to remake. Some people say, well, we want, we want repair, remake. So yes, whatever, we can do either one. So I hope you see the improvements of that communication between the factory and the floor. It's really a benefit to with the computerized communications. It just eliminates a tremendous amount of, of waste and time. Um, just imagine a simple process of sorting and managing your parts. So we're, we're reading your barcodes. I'm sure many of you are already using barcodes. So we just read that barcode and you, you, you saw earlier that, that picture of the, um, of the, um, from Joe, the um, mobile carts. And so those were racks. So here he's just scanning the part and production coach is flashing and telling him what bin to put the parts in. And each bin com contains all the parts for a complete cabinet or assembly. We also work with mobile carts. And again, well, that's what uh, Joe showed you, but here uh, or earlier it was just fixed carts. So either or fixed or mobile carts. So here again, it's telling what cart, you know, we want to access and scans the part, tells him again, what, what bin to put the part. So this is kind of a, a close up so you can see. So T1, you can see it's 10 of 10, it's green, meaning all of my parts are complete. And if you'll note in uh, B3 there, it says five of nine. So there's a countdown. Um, anytime you can click in that area and it'll show you all the parts that are missing. So the remainder of the uh, nine parts. And the yellow, um, that's where we had some uh, a part in progress. And, um, and then the orange is a damaged part. So there's a legend there and you can change the colors to your liking. Uh, you can click on any time and see your, your, again, your missing parts, things like that. Change for the right reason. Again, we work with mobile carts. Some prefer that, some prefer fixed carts, so either or. Um, so here is a, a live picture um, where they're sorting on the other side. They're doing a dowel and inserter as their last, and the screen's telling where to put the parts. But if you'll notice on this side, this guy is the prep. He's doing the hardware prep, and he only sees on his screen the green, meaning these bins have all the parts ready for assembly. So he'll pull those out, and production coach tells him all the hardware, which we just showed that screen earlier, all the hardware and everything is required. So sorting eliminates the need to search around for parts. It's just a clear visual of alerts and progress, simplifies uh, subsequent operations and better management and space and resources. Back, remember the glutes, you know, he just had a haystack of parts sitting around. They had to go through, sort them, organize them, write on them with a Sharpie. It just took a tremendous amount of time. We also have sorting aids. Instead of just that visual of you look and see the number of the location, we have audible sorting. We also have a light bar. We can light up that area where the part that you've just scanned goes. Or we can even light up or have audible to um, your hardware. So I have three slides for an example, four hinge types, and those are in separate bins. So as I'm doing my hardware prep, it'll actually light up those areas so I know what hardware to grab. So you don't leave anything to chance. We're, we're synchronizing. We're, we're looking down the road at our doors and drawers so that we don't uh, do an assembly before our doors and drawers are ready. So it synchronizes everything together. So if, it's, if this is your process or you have a different process, we can adapt yours. So production coach is real easily to be configurable. 
And I also might mention if you configure it, you certainly can easy move it and a few drop down menus, you can change uh, that production coach station. So synchronization is really important in the manufacturing process. Assembly, you know, it just becomes that easy. So here, um, a customer, here, here's his bins, he sees the green. So those areas are ready, he pulls them out, does no idea what it is. So he just scans any one part, it brings up that rendering of that and gives him all the information, again, for the assembly, the hardware. And as, as I just alluded to, it, it looks at the other side of the factory where possibly you're doing doors and drawers. And if it's not ready, then it won't turn green until those doors and drawers are ready. So assembly, easily locate all components, centralization of documentation, everyone's on the same sheet of music. Uh, prior, prior, I can't speak in <laughs> definitions, the task and steps, reduces assembly time. Again, 50% and all the way up to 300 has been our, our record report. So manage expectations, thanks to a comprehensive instruction guide. Can you imagine having something like this um, so it tells you again where the hardware is or we could do that with the lighting uh, can show you the hardware and this is a drum beat or a buffer it actually um, tells you how long it takes or it should take for you to do that hardware and um, that's just pretty pretty neat for special hardware instructions so maybe it's some uh, some hardware or assembly that you accessory you've never ever used. So you can actually even attach videos uh, with those assembly instructions. I won't go through watching him put all this together, but hopefully you get the point. Some companies have a like QC station, so these boxes are assembled, but uh, they do a kind of a QC. But they're also doing the doors. So he just scanned it, tells him I have a hinged up door there and it also pops up a screen and says on his mobile cart what bin that that uh, that door is at so easily found so it makes it easy to train new employees and helps with our quality standardization reduce workload for managers and certainly increases employee performance so wrapping things up We mentioned about those kits. So here are our loose items that we call, and we call it kitting then when we pick some items and stretch wrap them. Again, they're not part of the assembly, but they're part of the job site. They've got to get on that truck. So we can create kits, and then that kit, we create a kit label, and then that label will display only the parts of that kit, so now there's just one barcode scan to get all of those, for instance, number two parts, the kit number two, all those parts. And it really helps. We've had customers say on the job site, um, someone would say, well, you're missing this uh, left wall scribe. And uh, maybe they're sitting around and milking the labor. And the, the owner can say, well, did you have this toe kick or whatever? And he said, yes. Well, it was in the same kit, so it's there. And, and you've got verification. Um, here, let's just take a quick look. This is RFID, so there's a white box up here, and that's the, the reader. And so as that passes through, then you'll see the light bar, it'll turn green or red. Um, green is just giving confirmation, yes. And they needed that because of the foam wrap. And um, so anyway, that's just an illustration of RFID. Some people put it on their shipping dock, so there's no human intervention. It just automatically changes the status to being shipped. Um, so packaging, certainly grouping accessories by the, by the kits and helps in inspection of components, just simplify shipping and, and certainly then a real-time status of, of the project. So where is that? Um, some of you have the luxury of just going directly on the truck, but many people stage. So they have holding areas out, on the, out in the warehouse. 
So parking spots on the floor, if you will. So production coach can actually sign whatever group of products that you wanna select and then we can stage them. So now at, when shipping comes, it's easy. You can look and uh, it'll just tell you where these parts are located. Um, speaking of location, on the right, you'll see the, the staging of the parts, but here on the left actually even does staging of uh, those loose items or the, the kits that we've created. So optimi optimization of space and certainly easy to find when we're staging and just organizes the shipping change, chain and eliminates the time allocated to research. Um, delivery, a guaranteed profit. It's just kind of an industrial uh, joke when we ask questions about, do you ever have shipping uh, errors? And everyone just laughs and says, oh no, not us. But it's just like 99% of everyone we've ever talked to has shipping errors. So it's very simple to create a packing list and the person in charge can manage the, the load of the truck. And um, it gives the, you the date and the time of when everything was loaded. It changes the status. You'll see statuses where things have been cut and inspected. And, and so when you put it on the truck, it automatically changes it to ship. It gives that green or you can have the light tower uh, verification that that product is on the truck and uh, yellow it's just uh, you've already put it on the truck or if you scan something that doesn't belong on the truck it uh, it turns red and gives you alert that it, that that's, that goes on another truck so it just uh, gives you 100 percent accurate shipments um so with the delivery and production coach just eliminates incomplete shipments, real-time load validation and remote access to documents, just management of damaged parts. Um, our customers have liked the shipping so much, they said, we wanna take that to the next level if you can. We really want that for job site tracking. So we can do that um, as well. And so, not only that, uh, you see a drawing there. We actually have a Google Calendar. I'll show you in a moment. But if you're the installer, um, you have the job, it, you have the elevation drawings, you have all the data on your phone that's required. And we can scan parts off the truck just like we did scanning them on the truck. So on site tracking just eliminates incomplete deliveries and alert management. Um, by sending them information electronically, uh, centralization of documentations, and just real-time status of the project. Time is money. Um, certainly, we can do uh, timekeeping. Again, all of these are modules, so we can, uh, you know, just attack whatever might be your real problem area. But it's even uh, wherever there's a production coach station, uh, you can clock in on time. Not only time but a work order and then even in a, on a work order into a task. So I might be working on work order 21 in the morning at the saw and I might be in assembly in the afternoon. And so you can change your task, even mobile ready. So you can even have this on your employee's mobile device if you so desire. Um, this is really a valuable tool in my opinion it's just key performance indicators kpi so we can see a, a, a have a real vision of what's going on on the on the shop floor so these are your stations and so we're, we're, we've got a number or how many parts we should be producing at that station and then kind of a countdown how many parts we have and when we get an imbalance the the green is good but the yellow means hey we've we're starting to get a problem area we need to take action and the red is certainly a problem situation so these uh, gives you bottleneck alerts and how many parts are pending between stations and allows you to react before the problem becomes a real problem. Um, K 
KPIs are key performance indicators. They're very simple two colors to see where we're at in the, in, in the shop and our daily objectives according to targets. Um, so dashboards and KPIs, it's really, really gives you a global vision of your production and in real time. I mean, that's critical too, in the moment. Makes employees more, um, the Hawthorne effect, you heard heard of that possibly where GE did the turn the lights up and down and time study and performance increased. And, and by having these dashboards out on the shop floor, imagine a 60 inch TV, everybody can kind of see the performance. And uh, our customers have just said, it just makes our employees more productive. They feel like they're, they're being measured. Big data, that's a, a nice one too. Um, if you wanna see if a job reflects the estimate you made, you can select a job, an activity, uh, one, two, three or all, and you can check your cost per your, per your bid. And you can export, uh, it's available, it's Excel export to uh, obtain several factors. Um, so big data, it helps you make better business decisions and really get an accurate picture of your time and optimize your process, certainly save time and money. And we talked a little bit about Google Calendar. It's a module if you need to do planning or scheduling. We do a kind of a finite backwards schedule uh, with Google Calendar. These are your work orders. Here's a legend. So it says sorting is yellow. So this project and this project are all in the sorting mode. So you can get a snapshot of where things are going on. So we look at your delivery date and we're reading your, again, your engineering data. So we need know the size of every part and parts that need to be edge banded, et cetera. And with your machines, you give those machines a, a, a value, inches per minute, feet per minute, things like that. And we'll backward schedule based on the delivery, tell you when you need to start cutting and tell you when you need to do edge bending and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so scheduling, you know, time collection per project, real-time status, visual management, routing of parts. Again, production coach is uh, modular in nature. So there's a lot of modules. So just pick out where you want to start. And speaking of start, that's my encouragement is we get in analysis paralysis trying to figure out where every station needs to go and exactly what modules we need. But, you know, start small, just get started. And uh, everyone, seriously, every one of our customers then just, you know, love the, the technology and then add more stations. So this is customer feedback. So if some of these percentage numbers uh, look inviting to you, then I would encourage you maybe to uh, take a deeper look at Production Coach. We're happy to help you, so feel free to contact us. Um, basically, let's have some Q&A. Uh, again, uh, I mentioned in our webinar box, we had time for questions, so if you'll type those in. Uh, I think Sean is here to help us with those questions, so. Awesome, Mark, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for the presentation. That was very awesome very educational. Joe Baggett, my friend, uh, thank you for your contribution, not only to this um, session that we have, uh, to what you've done to help our company, and most importantly, what you've done to help our customers. So thank you both very, very much for that. Um, I have been monitoring questions in the background, and so I'm happy uh, to help with this uh, final session, uh, or the final uh, portion of this. Um, one of the questions asked uh, was, on our drills, we have uh, no control screens except for, you know, the internal. Is it possible that we uh, could get feedback um, so that the drill operator could alert uh, production or someone if there's a need for recut or that a certain job has been completed? Mark, you want to take that one? Uh, go ahead. You know, I was... Uh changing some screens, <laughs> wasn't paying that much yeah. attention. No, no problem. For those of you who have ever done a presentation like Mark just did, sometimes after you um, get done with that, your brain needs a little bit of a rest and, and voice and all that kind of stuff too. So 
Anyway, the answer is absolutely. Um, that is exactly two great purposes for production coach. It really becomes a um, need to um, have a solution that will work for what it is that you need. Um, I'm getting a message about audio. Just one section. Section. You sound good. Um, okay, very good. Thank you. Um, I got a message that audio was lost, and so I wanted to make sure people were hearing. Anyway, so that is a great example. And so let's just take that question a little bit further and say, hey, you know, what if I have a panel saw or a nested base router at first operation? Could I get benefit from having production codes? Well, if I want to know when a work order started in production, if I want to know the progress or when it was completed, or if I want to create an alert for something that went wrong, of course I could do those things. And so Mark was very right. Um, this is about you. It's about your factory. It's about the problems that you want to solve. It's about the improvements that you want to make in your uh, organization. And that's why uh, we're here from RSA Solutions today to be able to say, hey, this presentation is not sales. It's educational only. It's to give you a little bit of a vision of what's possible to do with technology and how production codes could possibly be implemented. So we're very, very happy to engage with you after the webcast to come up with a solution that meets your needs. But again, what Mark said about keeping it simple, you know, K-I-S-S, -S, let, let's just keep it simple, get started. Um, I heard a statistic the other day, and even though we know that a lot of statistics are made up, I'll try not to, but I believe that in the last 12 months, 92% of our uh, new integrations further expanded their integration after the initial. So don't think about this as, hey, you know what? Well, I got to go figure out everything I'll ever want to do and make that the project. Just get started and fix the shipping problem, do some tracking, whatever it is that's your biggest initial need. Let's solve that. Let's have such a great experience. The one thing that I can say is that um, the success rate is only 100%. We haven't figured out how to get it over 100% yet, but we don't take a project and we don't execute a project unless we know that we can do it successfully for our customers. So that's awesome. Okay, uh, next question. Hey, Sean. Um, Sean, yeah. before, you, before yeah. you go on, I just want to comment the question there about the wiki drills. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a wiki drill, a BSE drill, an edge bander, any machine, even just a a, a station. Um, no, no, no machines. Certainly, you can have a production coach there anywhere. Um, I, so I hope that kind of clears that up. So we're not really connected to the machine per se. It's just production coach is a station that can monitor the activities of that station. Yeah, I think that that's really good. Yeah, um, th that's a nice feature of Production Coach that it's agnostic as to the data source that it's coming in, meaning you can use your existing CAD CAM solution and it's agnostic to the machines that you have on the floor. So it doesn't mean that you have to stick with a certain brand or even a manufacturing strategy. It's able to work with any and all of those situations. So great, great, great question. Um, Question here, I'm reading real quick. Um, so if I purchase production coach, what happens next? Um, I think that's a really, really good question because obviously until something is integrated and in doing its function, um, it's just an expense, right? And we want it to be an investment that has a return. Um, I don't believe that I've ever spoken to a customer that didn't testify that they had a complete return on investment in less than six months. And so, I mean, it really is a super, super fast uh, payback, but that only counts once it's integrated. So what do we do? So after a sale has made, you are assigned a project manager that reaches out to you within a short amount of time to do what's called a kickoff meeting. And that kickoff meeting is, first of all, our first check to make sure that things are good. It's a review of the sales order and the customer's expectations 
outside of that conversation with the salesperson so that we identify if there's any uh, things that might not align perfectly so we can deal with those early on. Uh, most of the time that's not the case, but it also helps us in clarification of the project, including helping people understand what hardware, meaning scanners, printers, computers, might be required for the project. Uh, from there, the project manager develops what's called a project plan, and that is submitted to the customer for them to review to make sure that we have the right scope for the project, both of the software and the services. Once the scope is signed off, then we wait for confirmation from the customer that they have the hardware in place. Uh, once the hardware is in place, we schedule an online uh, session with the customer to install the centralized SQL database on a PC or server, and we install the program on each of the computers that will be involved, you know, one in the office for sure, and then whatever the office computers are to make sure that we don't have an IT issue that we're actually able to communicate with the SQL database. Once we've done that, then we schedule to come on site and we do the final integration and user training so that you're actually running live production while we're on site. So anyway, great question. Uh, Mark or Jeff, have any comments to that? Well, maybe not that, but it just made me think just this week, I got a call from one of my customers and uh, he was so gracious to allow us to do a, a factory tour there where we invite, you know, people like you all out there to come and see production coach running live in a facility. We hold those all over uh, the country, but he called me and again, this early this week. And he said, you know, when you were here, we had two CNC machines. He says, um, man, production coach has helped us so much. We're growing because you know, we have 10 CNCs now. I'm like, wow, that's just, that's just amazing. So so many, so many success stories. It's just, it's just fun to share. No, it is. It's a, it's, it's a great pleasure. It's a wonderful honor to have the opportunity to be able to help customers achieve increased profits and to streamline their business and to get rid of a lot of the headaches and the, the pain points that uh, every company faces. So that is uh, definitely a great thing for sure. Um, I, I won't begin to get into the testimonies because it'd be too long other than to say that I believe on average our customers attest that without adding personnel, meaning no more labor, without adding equipment, meaning no more expense, and without adding square foot, they're increasing their throughput by 30 to 40 percent. And that's a huge, huge number. If you do a little calculation based on the profitability of your business and to be uh, knowing that it could have that kind of an impact, that's how you get to a less than six month return on investment. So um, so the question, this is a great one, Mark. Um, you said just get started. And so what does just get started mean? And, and I'll uh, try my best to give a first level um, answer to that. Um, first, we know that we need a license of production coach in the office to connect the data um, for each work order coming from whatever your design software is. Um, the um, minimum would be to say that um, we are going to monitor and to ensure that shipping is 100% correct. So we need at least a third station at assembly, which would give us a product label. So we would have a barcode to scan for the products or kits or whatever that is. So that would be like the very, very basic minimum. But instead of thinking about it from that uh, perspective, here's what I wanna do. I want you to consider sketching out, unless you got an AutoCAD drawing or whatever, but sketch out your manufacturing facility. You know, label where you're starting production, what the workflow is and your shipping dock and those kind of things. And just make a little circle or a triangle and say, hey, these would be the most important for like a phase one implementation and make a triangle or, or a circle, however you want to do it, red or blue or however you want to make it. And just get a visual of it being in your own factory. And I believe that that can help you come up with a right strategy for starting with the right amount of modules and stations to get going. So hopefully that's uh, helpful. 
Um, question here about price. Uh, today's uh, John, session is a, yeah. I hate to I hate to interrupt. We're uh, really pushing our time here, and apologize to the group out there. We just can't get to all of your questions. Um, but I just wanted to urge you to register at rsasolutions.com for our next session if you would like. It's cyber protection from the dark web, starting at 12:10. Um, so after here, you can you can get on our website and register. It was funny last night on our local news. Again, I'm in Southwest Missouri. Kansas City is uh, Garmin, and Garmin. It was on the news was ransom for 10 million dollars. Um, so whether we like it or not. Uh, you know, there's people out there uh, that's trying to steal our identity and our information. And believe it or not, we've had a few of our customers we know that have been uh, held ransom for ransomware as well. So encourage you. Uh, again, thanks again for joining us and stay safe.